Freelander 2 diff uh, Haldex unit diff um, turn the Haldex and see that it rotates the uh, output but then it starts getting a bit stiff and then the two output drives don't turn I'd imagine that's probably because there's a bit of friction in the diff and obviously the Haldex unit isn't powered to provide drive to the diff but it just confirmed there, there is a stiffness in the diff and go backwards go the other way as if driving backwards that's fine doesn't get stiff doesn't do anything nothing go to go forwards and all of a sudden it gets stiff and then it locks up the diff refuses to turn now if we go to this is the passenger side we can rotate the passenger side the driver's side will rotate in the opposite direction as it should both forwards and backwards and the same if you rotate the driver's side going forwards the passenger side goes in the reverse direction as it should but if you hold one steady so we're now driving back through there it all of a sudden locks up gets really stiff grinding and there it locks up again I can't turn it anymore but if we turn it backwards doesn't lock up doesn't do anything absolutely fine same with the passenger side if we're going as if we're driving forwards it's fine and then it locks solid but if we do it in, as if we're driving in reverse no problem at all drive them both forwards a bit tight there and tight there so yeah curious what say there's definitely it's like there definitely a tightness there as if driving forwards it goes it's gone tight again if you go backwards as if driving backwards doesn't lock up at all. Now I know obviously the Haldex isn't powered so technically there's no real drive going through there but you can see the internal friction. It just seems strange that it locks up when driving forwards it locks up there. I can't physically turn it any further. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that took a bit of effort though. Every now and then it just locks up. <sighs> Curious, I suppose. Take the Haldex off, repeat the process, see if it locks up, see if it's something to do with the Haldex. Haldex unit's removed. Again, we can return passenger side and the opposite side turns in, in the opposite direction as it should. A bit grindy there, but it turned. Same with that driver's side. You can turn that quite well. Opposite side will turn quite nicely. A bit of a jolt there. Hold one. Yeah. Turn it backwards. It's fine. And the input shaft is turning. Yeah, the input shaft looks like it's wobbling around a little. Turn it the other way. Oh. I can't turn the driver's side while holding the passenger still. Uh. Same with passenger side. I can't hold the driver's side still and I can't budge the passenger side. Turning it backwards, it's fine. 
going forwards. Not a chance. Can't even turn them both forwards. Both backwards is fine. Both forwards right, locks up. Guess I'm going to have to take diff casing off and find out what it's binding up. But I can't, can't budge those now. All right, let's take the side of the diff off. See what happens. Right, the diff's been taken apart. Do excuse the mess of my workbench, um, but you can see that the diff cover is looking a little horrible rusty and a bit gritty and a bit bitty. And I'm fairly sure it's not supposed to be that horrible brown colour. Similarly, this bearing race is grinding and gritty and brown. Looks like it's got rusty at some point, like some water's got in here. The other side isn't looking too bad. It's, that's beautifully smooth, no grittiness, and also it's lovely in proper colour oil. It's not rusty at all. Obviously this side is looking bad. That I don't think is the problem. Because if you remember when I was rotating the diff, um, yeah, grit and all sorts of oils stuff in there. When I was rotating the diff before I had it open, I said, "Oh, the input shaft seems to be moving around." This is this is the inside of the diff. It's looking a bit gritty and horrible. And here's the. Ah, it's got a bit dark. Uh, how am I going to do this? Uh, what you're getting is the light compensation on the camera. Let me take the white glove off. Uh, I'll be back within a second. Right, let's see if I can do it with the grubbiness of my hand. It's still getting... Come on. See that? Moving around the input shaft. Grindy. Yeah. The input shaft. I'm sorry about the uh, blown out this because obviously the sunlight on my hand. But well, there's the problem. So obviously when you're turning it one way, it doesn't lock up, but when you turn it the other way, it does because it's moves around on the bearing and jams itself up solid. That's the problem. If we look here, this is the input shaft. You can see how much this moves around. So. Well there's your problem. locking up and everything but what I believe it has done if I just scoot this to one side in the box is if we look on the crown wheel we can see it's taken a chunk sorry you can see it's taken a chunk out of the, uh, the actual diff cage as well that's not a loose bit of swarf, that's actually part of the cage. I can't, I'm gonna have to take that bit out. But yeah, with that gear moving about, smacked into the cage, locked up the diff slightly solid, which is why when the wife was driving it, she said it was as if someone had slammed the brakes on. But that's the gear mashing its way into the differential cage. So, here's the problem. Right, seal is out using a screw, welded badly, 
admittedly, to the end of a bolt which is fitted into my injector puller as a slide hammer. But it managed to get the seal out, even if it was a little rudimentary and, sorry, really badly welded. Just needed to get it done. Right. So, there we go. Loads of movement there. And from what I can see, I think part of the bearing cage is actually disintegrated in places. You can see it there. At sort of about the two to three o'clock position on the screen. And again there as well. Yeah, so I've just got to try and figure out a way of getting that stupid nut off um, without spending a few hundred quid on a special tool. But yeah, so it might be the uh, the old 42 mil socket welded to a tube with a Mondeo spline clutch thing. To hold the shaft or turn the shaft and yeah I've got to figure that one out but there we go that is definitely definitely the problem all right well I've just gone in and fished out that thing that was floating around in there that's part of that is the uh, roller bearing cage you can see it's uh, all the rollers are loose in there the cage is disintegrated due to, I can only imagine, massive overheating. Oh, just dropped it again. Yeah. So yeah, so I can only imagine that it is overheated, loads of play, disintegrated, worn out, locked itself up and just, just shagged it really. So let's have a poke around of some of those rollers. There you go. Let's see if I can poke a poke a roller or two. See what's uh, difficult to see but they do seem to be a little loose in there. Anyway, that's your problem.